What's good guys, Dover Reactor here back with another video. Today we're reacting to a major kill video called Space Sharks. Uh we're finna get into this video guys. Uh finna explain what Space Sharks is. You know, I think it's somebody something new that we learned. So if you're new to the channel guys, uh please hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button if you uh if mm -hmm. you enjoy the video and want to see more videos like this, hit that like button. Yeah, also, hit that notification to keep you updated with the videos we come out with, guys. Also, hit that share button, guys. Without further ado, guys, let's get into this video. Space Sharks. <laughs> it's like a sci-fi movie. Fantasy. Then there you go. Let's get into it. 10,000 years before the Necrons were awakening, before the Tau were being uppity weebs, and before the Elder was so screwed that the final solution to all their problems was attempt to awaken the God of Death, an oiled, muscly man with long flowing hair and extreme <laughs> thrusting power lived on Earth. He spent his days frolicking with maidens, tending the fields, and preparing for galactic domination. Ha! You thought I was talking about Jesus for a second there, didn't you? <laughs> well, checkmate Christians, because I'm talking about the real messiah, the god emperor of mankind. This man, the Big E, knew that the galaxy was a big scary place, and that nothing short of an army of demigod super soldiers would mm -hmm. cut it. Hence, he created 20 legions of demigod super soldiers with an even more powerful super soldier leading each legion called a Primarch. Tell him what those legions did, Sleepy. Well, if humanity was to survive against the endless threats posed by the forces of chaos, Xenos races, and even its own fragile nature, then right. a great deal of change was needed. They were basically protectors of the with world. With his new legions of super, sol super soldiers, the Emperor formulated a plan to bring errant worlds to Imperial compliance, uniting them all under a single banner. This was known as the Great Crusade, and was considered by many as the Golden Age of the Imperium. Yeah. <laughs> it acted as a catalyst which propelled humanity forwards, allowing them to unite and rebuild. Radical advancements in weapons technology were made, allowing the Space Marine Legions to be equipped with the tools befitting the Emperor's finest. The Space Marine Legions would form the core of the Emperor's mighty armies, yep. supported by vast garrisons of Imperial, Imperial Guard. Guards. These combined forces swept across the galaxy, conquering planet after planet, all under direct command of the Emperor himself. After achieving victory against the Orcs during the Ulanar Crusade, the Emperor returned to Terra to begin work on his next project. He bestowed the title of Imperial War Master upon Horus, the Primarch <laughs> of the Lunar Wolves, giving him full command over the entirety of the Great Crusade, including all of his brother Primarchs and their vast legions of Space Marines. This was going well until Horus thought it would be a good idea to sell his soul to the forces of Hell and damn the galaxy to a war that mankind would never ever recover from. Yeah, oh. As a result of this, <laughs> a lot of people died, including our glorious Hawk Boy as well as the Bold Man himself. The Emperor ended up so disabled that he would make Stephen Hawking look like an Olympic pole vaulter as well. Oh my Gilliman, oh my the only God. Primarch left who had any common sense, broke up the Space Marine Legions into 1,000 man strong chapters to distribute the power of the Imperium more, so that no one man would ever hold the power of a Space Marine Legion mm. ever again. Over 10,000 years of dividing chapters, creating new successor ones, experimenting with Gene Seed, and warp spaghetti, we ended up with a few really weird chapters. Some of their weirdness can be explained by heresy, such as the Minotaurs being Iron Warrior successes, or the Blood Ravens being Thousand Sun successes, but for the Space Sharks, it's still a bit of a mystery. The most prevalent theory is that Korax fucked a shark at some point, as the Space Sharks share a lot of similarities <laughs> with the Raven Guard, such as being quiet little goth kids with black eyes. <laughs> However, the fact that they are also sharks in power armor means that can't all be there is to it. Hmm. The truth behind their origins is complicated and pretty irrelevant. It seems that they are exiled Raven Guard with gene seed mutations that which make them sharky. They also seem to steal Night Lord's gene seed, hence making them somewhat hybrid, whilst mm, also helping explain their intense level of blood and violence. No, you know. To explain a space shark, we should first explain a shark. Sleepy Sack, take it away. A shark is a formidable predator, mm -hmm. capable of rousing fear and awe like no other creature in the sea. Sharks have evolved into swift and deadly killing machines, with mouths lined in multiple rows of serrated, spear-like teeth. When hunting, Sharks specialize in lurking in the dark void of the ocean, ready to launch a vicious surprise attack on their prey, mercilessly tearing them to shreds with rows of razor-sharp teeth. When in large groups, sharks have been known to attack their prey in wild feeding frenzies, 
sometimes even attacking their own in the blood-crazed mayhem. The scent of freshly spilled blood only serves to amplify the intensity of their attacks. That description is interchangeable with I'm a shark, in space or not. Let me give you some examples. The space sharks reside as a roaming fleet in the deepest void of space, far from the Emperor's light, where they massacred threats to the Imperium many years before they would even be detected. They do not relish in ornaments or their ego as they wear plain, ancient patchwork power armor. They rarely ever see the Imperium or the Mechanicus. They have to repair and maintain their own equipment, some of which is dated Dang. back to the Horus Heresy. To recruit- I wanna know why they're not a part of that though, you know what I'm saying? They are a part, they just don't- The Red Teeth, where they basically rock up to an Imperial world, kidnap all their prisoners, and try to turn them into space sharks, with the success rate being super low and the mortality <laughs> rate being super high. But Major Kill, isn't turning criminals into Astartes a really bad idea? The Night Lords did this and they became massive douchebags. Shut your stupid retard mouth to me before I put raw fish in your underpants and unleash the space sharks upon you. The Night Lords were the result of giving cringy edgelord teens in juvie godlike weapons and powers, with no discipline or stability. Yeah, the space sharks were a result of the same type of kids being scared straight by giant disciplined sharks with cold dead eyes. The super high mortality rate of the initiates into the sharks also generally means none of the pathetic ones get through anyway. Then there's the Grey Teeth, which is when the space sharks yeah, encounter really a forge world and give them super old technology and also other random shit floating around deep in void of space in exchange for new guns and toys. With these new guns, or should I say projectile melee weapons as the sharks prefer to be able to smell their enemies from 3 meters away as they blow them apart, the sh- Oh, uh, I think, uh, bro, that looks so good, bro, that armor. I I didn't know. Oh, you don't like that? Sharks do some serious you damage. Like the space sharks were forgotten by the galaxy for thousands of years, as you know, there's a lot going on, so when a space marine chapter who was never chatty in the first place goes off in to live in whoop whoop, the Imperium wasn't too bothered with keeping track. Despite this, the space sharks would periodically return when the Imperium needed them to. Each time, no one was sure what side they were on as they would arrive, massacre everyone with a tentacle or horn, and then return back to the darkness. They returned for Abaddon's 7th Black Crusade as the Blood yeah, Angels were getting clapped. The space sharks- Black Templars. I like the Black Templars, but darker. Eh, I don't get that feeling from me, I don't. ...appeared out of nowhere and promptly embarrassed so both the like Corner Berserkers as well as the what? Blood Angels, yeah. two groups known for their melee savagery, well, as the Space Sharks right? completely <laughs> emacerated the anal cavities of the Black Legion. After the battle, the Space Sharks vanished and the Blood Angels had statues and honors erected for them, as no one knew who the Space Sharks were and just described it as if a large predatory beast had come and molested Abaddon. Wow. Now we all know the Night Lords like picking on weaker enemies and undefended worlds, cause you know, they're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> Hence, they got the surprise of their life when they began pillaging the Imperial world, which was also coincidentally the target of the Space Shark's next red teeth. Well, needless to say, in the Animal Kingdom, a shark would beat a bat. Hence, the Night Lords felt fear as they were massacred, their leader killed, and their pillage ruined. When in combat, the Space Sharks love getting stuck into a fight. Out of all the Space Marine chapters, the Space Shark assaults are often the bloodiest. Mm. They carve their way through opponents wielding howling adamantium <laughs> tooth weaponry. Like, like Due to their shark-like characteristics, they prefer weapons lined with rotating teeth, such as chain swords and chain axes. Mm. Even bolter that weapons are adapted to like fit small axe. rotary saws. These particular close combat weapons allow the Space Sharks to inflict a savage amount of bloodshed upon their enemies. Yeah. Now all good chapters are riddled with heresy, and the Space Sharks are no different. In the Void, there isn't a whole lot other than darkness and tyranids. The Space Sharks destroyed countless splinter fleets, but knew they had to crush the nearby Gene Sealer cult to stop them from signaling out even more tyranids. To do this, they called in an ancient favour from the Ashen Claws, a renegade chapter and enemy of the Imperium. With the favour called, they arrived at the heavily infested planet, which was a shrine world, and told everyone they weren't allowed to pray anymore. Now telling a gene stealer infected shrine world that they aren't allowed to pray is like telling an American to wear a mask. It's right. just not going to go down peacefully. Fortunately for the space sharks, peace was never an option. Bail Shah, captain of the space say, sharks like, third company, led a vicious assault against the countless hordes of gene stealers. But his forces were quickly overrun, surrounded on all sides by the seemingly endless tide of rending claws. The streets began to run red with blood and violence, and the members of the third company began to fall, one by one. 
The space sharks made a desperate last stand inside the stone walls of a nearby cathedral. However, the battle had gone according to plan. Bale Shah called forth the fury of the first company, the veteran Terminator squads, supported by an ancient contemptor pattern dreadnought. That? These heavily armored warriors plunged into the fray, shredding apart the foul inhuman creatures with <laughs> hails of bolt of fire and lashes of close combat attacks. This powerful counterattack made short work of the gene stealers surrounding the cathedral. However, more and more swarmed the area by the minute. Now, I'm not big on exterminatuses, no. but when an entire no. planet is full of gene stealers, it's really not the worst option. The space sharks are not one to ruin a good fight though, so they relish the opportunity to wreck some noobs. Eventually, so many gene stealers died so quickly that the gene stealer patriarch emerged and was put down just as quickly. Even with the patriarch dead, there were still millions of angry gene stealers, hence it was only the arrival of the Ashen Claws was the four-armed freaks finally put down for good. By the time the Imperial forces arrived, the Ashen Claws and Space Sharks were long gone, and the planet was a smoking ruin full of dead gene stealers. Basically a fun melee version of an exterminator. Yeah, <laughs> the Space Sharks have featured pretty heavily in recent times, as they distinguished themselves in the Badab War, an Imperial Civil War between the Stardis chapters. Help me out with this one, Sleepy. The Space Sharks' first involvement in the Badab War began as their strike cruisers arrived to bolster the Loyalist cause against the civil uprising. They were initially unrecognized by many of the Loyalist forces never seen it as their operational activities had always remained shrouded in mystery. They were eventually accepted into the battle lines after cautious investigations <laughs> of their intentions. The Space Sharks were deployed to a territory a controlled by the Mantis <laughs> Warriors in the Endymion Cluster. Their mission was simple, the complete destruction of any planet within the cluster that was known to contain forces of Mantis Warriors. This brutal action drew the Mantis Warriors out, forcing them to abandon their hit-and-run tactics bro, and return so to protect huge, their worlds from further casualties. Another notable contribution of the Space Sharks took place on Badab Primaris, during the final battle of the Badab War. The planet was the homeworld of the renegade Astral Claws chapter. Hmm. The powerful atomic and geothermal reactors which provided power to the colossal hive cities and planetary defense guns on Badab Primaris were identified as a prime target. The Space Sharks sent in incursion forces who successfully sabotaged the reactors. The resulting catastrophic explosion shook the very foundations of the planet. Shockwaves radiated through the tectonic plates, opening up vast chasms that engulfed entire sections of the city. Dang. Plumes of molten lava began to spew from the surface this is, this as the entire planet collapsed on itself. Be kind of bad, I guess. Following this, the Space Sharks fleet returned to the Endymion Cluster to harvest new recruits to replace those that had fallen like they in the bloody if they conflict. Want to get stuff really, really yeah. done. After you know receiving their payment in blood, they departed back into the darkness of the outer void. <laughs> now you might be like, Major Kill, I'm still not convinced these guys are genuine sharks. Well, let me finally put your concerns to rest. Space Shark Liberians have two special unique abilities. One is called From the Depths, where they flood the enemy's mind with the sensation of drowning, and the other what? one is called Rending More, where they summon an avatar of a shark Nah, to that is a cool ability, bro. Yeah, I, mean, I hate to get hit, but that... What, you feel like you're like drowning, drowning, bro? Oh my god, For their enemies. Bro. As Space Sharks age, their skin turns grey and rubbery, like mm. a shark. They also progressively get demented, being uptight, merciless, and eventually so antisocial that they basically just wander off by themselves and kill bad guys until they die. <laughs> like a shark. So, not as bad as becoming yeah, a PTSD I, fueled vampire like nor a furry, cool, really. but still not super about. high on the idealio scale. The space sharks are also incredibly silent yet violent. The kind of guy to sneak up on you and instead of breaking your neck or choking you, they instantly give away their element of surprise by performing a Mortal Kombat fatality on you that may <laughs> or may not involve you getting bitten. Just like a shark. <laughs> their preferences for traveling through the void is also a reference to a shark traveling in deep waters. The only chapter I can think of that displays this level of ruthlessness and efficient hunting and killing are the Retributors from Astartes, which a lot of you guys drew comparisons with on my Retributors video. They wear unmarked basic armor, don't autistically screech before charging at the enemy, and they get shit done. 
I made a point recently that having the Minotaurs on your bad side was one of the worst things that could happen to you in the entire galaxy, but I genuinely believe having the Space Sharks against you might be even worse. You'll see the Minotaurs coming from a mile off. You'll know exactly the moment that Asterion Malok shoves his spear up your ass. For the Space Sharks, <laughs> you'll live in fear, never knowing when they will arrive until the day they are in front of you for the wow. split second before you're torn in half. Overall, another dope-ass chapter that shows why there are a lot of people that think loyalists are way cooler than traitors. And that does us for today, Man, guys. Was, the lore, origins, bro, and sharkiness of... Space Sharks are crazy. Like, they got me thinking, like, yeah. are they the more power? Well, the more... Just... Get stuff done. Le Legion. I don't know, man, because they Did got to say who they prime mark was. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think. So. Yeah, yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. I so, yeah, but the, the ability to get you, make you sound like you drowning, bro. That's still that's sticking with me, bro. So, uh, that was that was cool, bro. Getting to know space sharks like that, bro. So, uh, my thanks. Uh, thank you guys for recommending this video, guys. If you want to see more uh, videos like this, recommend them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button. And also hit that notification button, guys. Uh, it keeps you up to date when we come out videos. Also, hit uh, share the video, guys, and we we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.